watch Netflix and chill Baby, I'm for real I won't pull out if you want to peel Baby, what's the deal? You wanna watch Netflix and chill Baby, I'm for real I won't pull out if you want to peel What's going on, everybody out there in podcast land? This is JP from the 22 Shots of Moods and Horror. I'm sure most of you guys know me pretty well, but what we have here today is not an episode of 22 Shots of Moods and Horror, obviously, but what I have here is something new, something exciting. Hopefully, it is Netflix and chill. That's Netflix with an N, chill, horror podcast. I know that there are tons of podcasts named Netflix and Chill because I thought I was creative, but I wasn't, so I googled it. Of course, there's a bunch of them. I don't really care. Fuck them. So this is the Netflix and Chill Horror Podcast, and before I get into what the show is about, uh, it is not a solo cast. I actually have a co-host here with me making her, that's right, I said her, she's a girl, kind of, podcast debut. Her name is... I'm Carly. You probably know me from nothing because I don't do YouTube or podcasts, but hi. Yeah, so Carly uh, is a friend of mine, and basically uh, she has known about the podcast that I do. She, d- she doesn't listen to it or anything, but she is aware of it, and I've talked about it a few times to her, and she seemed really interested, so I asked her if she wanted to try to do uh, a podcast herself and she uh, accepted i um, sure she's a little bit nervous because uh, it is her <laughs> uh, first time podcasting um, but it's not too hard once you get into it a little bit obviously uh, I've been doing it quite a while now so it's pretty easy for me probably won't be easy for you no nah. nah. <laughs> <laughs> all right so a uh, little bit of sort of a backstory on us um we're friends uh we met at a job that we uh still currently both work at um and she is into horror films so that's you know right away uh hit it off so we um usually kick it once a week maybe and and watch some movies or watch a movie or do something and it's always horror for the most part and uh, she's not as knowledgeable in the horror world, but you do really like horror, right? Yeah. So what would you say you you grew up watching horror? Yeah. I mean, like, I'd say when I was five or six, my mom was watching. I forget if it was Halloween or Scream. It was one of those slasher movies it was one of those things where I just kind of was in the room with her and she was, you know, thinking like, oh, I'm a bad parent for letting this happen, but I'm going to let it happen anyway, because those movies aren't that bad anyway. But I was really into it. And then she was like, oh, if you like this movie, you'll like this movie, too. And then I just started liking horror movies. Yeah. So uh, with me, you know, it was very, very early that I started watching horror films and I always was seeking that like thrill from you know some of the first ones that i watched you know seeking that fear that scare because unlike some kids who uh maybe they seen a clip to a horror movie walking past the tv or they ended up watching a full one and it terrified them to death and and you know it was a huge mistake or whatever by the parents and then (laughs) they they didn't show them anything else like that or they didn't see anything else like that for me, it was, oh my god, I love this. I, I need more of this. Like I embraced the fear. Like I love that about horror movies, and that's why I kind of went down the path that I did. Is, is it kind of similar with you? Like, did you yeah. did you really enjoy the scare instead of being afraid of it? Well, I mean, I was afraid of it, and I would always cover my eyes and all that. But I still loved watching them, even though I would basically not watch 90% of the movie because I'd be too scared. Like, I remember I'd go to my grandma's. I went to my grandma's once, and I brought Scream with me because I wanted her to put it in for me. And I was covering my eyes throughout, like, the first bit. And, like, she immediately turned it off and put on, like, Dora the Explorer. And I was really pissed off. And I, like, turned and, like, (laughs) just, like, sat on the couch. Pouted. Yeah, I pouted. 
and I was just angry. But I mean, I was always like afraid of the movies. Like I'm not gonna lie, but I still loved watching them. Yeah, um, I wasn't really afraid at all. I was kind of a badass as a kid. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> but so anyway, uh, what is your favorite horror movie? The Shining. Shining, classic choice. I know. People like Moods and Dave Z would be happy with that choice. Yeah, but you um, shit on it. So. <laughs> no, I, I do like I do like The Shining. I I, res- I respect it. I do think it's one of the best horror films ever made. I just don't love it like everybody else. Yeah. So, uh, you know, before we get into much more, this podcast is obviously called Netflix and Chill Horror Podcast, and the concept behind this is very simple. It's I figured it would be universal at first, you know, basically chill and watch a movie on Netflix. Obviously, it's has a double meaning in today's society, right? Like the the Netflix and chill, like, and I thought it would be funny. Actually, you actually did come up with the name, right? Was it you? No, I came up with the other name of the other failed idea that's happening. Yeah, so I came up with Netflix and chill. Yeah, I'm brilliant. It's no, it's literally not like original at all, but whatever. (laughs) It's original because you're a girl and I'm a guy, and you know it's in today's culture like Netflix and chill. Yeah, yeah, we bang while we watch the movie and then we view it. So. I thought that that was, you know, kind of a funny, like, double entendre type thing, and, and it would go good for a, a podcast name. Unfortunately, there are a bunch of them, um, but I couldn't find any specifically to horror, so that's why we added the little horror podcast onto it, and honestly, most of the ones, because I, I did just check them out briefly just to see what they were about, because if they were way better than me, then I wasn't even going to try to attempt to call it that. Um, but you know, um, a lot of them are actually defunct. Like they did like three episodes and they're gone. Uh, I couldn't find any that were like actively still running that, that were like literally called Netflix and chill or, or one of those variations. Do you say none of them were horror or they were horror? That you I know? didn't see any that were like exclusively horror podcasts. So uh. that, that's one good thing. Uh, so basically you have the Netflix, you know, everybody knows about Netflix by now, and the streaming service, which is pretty much all Netflix is basically is now. They do have the DVD by mail thing, but that's now called DVD.com, I guess. I didn't even know about that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, streaming. We're going to review a film uh, per episode from that is available on Netflix streaming. Now... So some people did actually bring it to my attention. Well, that's not the greatest idea in the world because uh, you can't watch certain things in certain territories. So, like, the film that we're going to be talking about tonight, which is Baskin, might not be on the Netflix in the UK. Or it might not be on Netflix in France or in Canada. Uh, which I'm aware of that now. I didn't really think about it at first. But, um, unfortunately... You know, there's not much I can do about that if we if we we would have had to abandon the whole idea. <laughs> um, the you know, but I uh, I do have maybe a couple of things brewing in my head that that might help with that a little bit to make it m- a little more universal because I do want to be universal to the people that that listen to to my shows and and shows uh, like this one. Because I know there's a lot of people in the UK and, and Canada and, and all over the world, really, that, that check out these podcasts, especially on the Horophilia Network. And uh, I did want to be universal. Um, but at the end of the day, guys, it's a movie. You know, We're still reviewing a movie, so you can still see it other ways, um, whether it's on home media or on a streaming service or VOD or whatever. So we'll still be re- reviewing movies at the end of the day, horror movies. It's just so happens that they're released on Netflix here in the States. Um, and, you know, with with the whole thing about what are we going to review, I, at first I kind of wanted to just review whatever was on Netflix. And then you and I had kind of talked a little bit um or at least I talk to myself in my head. <laughs> and yeah. uh, I, I think um, we'll probably stick mostly to newer stuff. Yeah, you told me. I did tell you? Yeah. 
Okay, so the reason for that is because uh, I think the the newer stuff is a little more relevant to the type of people that might be happening upon this podcast, um, and I think that you know it'll be beneficial. Uh, you know, I, my idea here is to maybe release it on like a Thursday, and people can you know listen to it, download it, and then hear what film we're talking about and if it's a current more newer release on netflix then maybe uh after they listen to the podcast they know what they're watching friday night whether it's date night or just chill on the couch by yourself you know netflix and chill with your hand or whatever um (laughs) no i kid i kid but you, you know what i'm saying so it's it's it's uh i have like an idea behind what i would hope and like this show to maybe be but at the end of the day it's a fucking movie review so that's what it is um do you have anything to add to that i mean it's good because we can see like new movies too instead of just watching the old stuff that's on there because i'm sure you've probably seen like every movie anyway yeah you like to you it does seem like i've seen every movie anyway i mean i watched 225 movies this year and i still get called names it's true. It's true. We did have a little sort of um, wager going where we saw, you know, challenge each other to see how many movies we can watch. I, I did not do as good as I had hoped, but I still beat you, so that's all that matters. I'm just saying you're talking mad smack. And yeah. You didn't beat me by that much. Yeah, not it's that. true. It's true. <laughs> um, you know, for being, you know, a novice, like I call you all the time, you, you did fairly well in the 365-day uh, challenge uh, and the new challenge has begun uh, as yeah. of the first of this year and we are both up to two films now I believe yeah. so uh, <laughs> neck and neck um, anyway so uh, that is sort of our little intro here uh, this is Carly uh, you guys know me as JP so uh, this is sort of a pilot episode we're gonna put it out there and if you guys like it you want to hear more about it you want to hear us cover more films, you want to throw us recommendations, uh, then we'll continue it on. If we do continue it on, it'll most likely be a bi-weekly podcast, meaning every other week for those of you who are dumb, um, like you, Carly. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck (laughs) off. But yeah, bi-weekly I think would be fair, and who knows if if it is successful, if people download it, if people like it, there's always more room to do more. That's you know how, how how most of these podcasts work if nobody listens then what the hell we'll just continue to watch movies and talk about them afterwards and not record it <laughs> you yeah, know what i mean so guys. so um <laughs> yeah the, the, <laughs> wait podcasting 101 you do not insult the listeners i mean i mean i mean like if you ain't listening then they're not listeners so like you know fair so. point fair point fair point so uh we're gonna get into baskin here Right after we take a quick break, we'll be right back. Nedir apo? Destek bekliyorlar. İnce ağaç. Oralardan çok hikaye duymuştum var. Nasıl hikayeler lan? Ya şimdi tövbe tövbe gece gece. Bize katılmaya geldiniz. Abi, abi bunlar ne? Biz bu gece buraya çağrıldık. İspartalı abi hikaye. Hadi abi. Herkes dikkatli olsun tamam mı? Sen hala farkında değilsin. Kimsin lan sen? Polis sana lan! So getting in to the reason we are here, which is to cover the film Baskin 
from the year 2015, it had its festival circuit run in 2015, but it didn't make its uh, wide release debut until 2016. So a lot of people do consider this a 2016 release. Uh, it has popped up on 2016 top 10 lists. I've seen it on a few myself, uh, and I've seen it on a lot of honorable mentions for 2016 as well. Uh, this film is a film that uh, is a U.S. Turkey co-production, actually. So it's it's uh, mainly from Turkey, but uh, it did have funding from the U.S. Uh, you know, production companies from the U.S. But uh, it, it's it seems native to Turkey, which uh, I'm not sure if I've seen a film from Turkey. Have you? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I, I'm. You haven't watched a ton of foreign movies, have you? No. Nah. Um, yeah, I, I haven't watched a ton either, but uh, I'm definitely improving on my uh, foreign watching uh, films as of late. Uh, the director is Ken Evrenal. Literally Ken <laughs> is his name. Yeah, C-A-N. Uh, do you want to give a shot at pronouncing that director's name? Evrenal? I mean, it looks Evernal. easy, but I Yeah, I think like... it's Ken Evrenal. <laughs> And uh, directed by or written by a couple of people. I'm not even going to go into those. Wait, Augula Can. Augula Can. There's a lot of cans in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> this name is literally Aug Augula Can. Augula Can. Jesus nailed it. Um, so uh, <laughs> Jesus, man. Uh, anytime there is uh, foreign filmmakers, I always, always, always drop the ball with pronunciation because. One, I'm just a bit bad at, I'm I'm just Dumbass. pretty bad at yeah, pretty much. Um, I'm bad at like spelling and and. No, I can't all this pronounce stuff. it either. Yeah, it's embarrassing. It, it's tough. So uh, the tagline for Baskin is "Enter a world of madness and suffering." Uh, the film follows a squad of unsuspecting cops that go through a trapdoor to hell when they stumble upon a black mass in an abandoned building. Um, yeah, pretty much, basically, kind of. Um, that is the IMDb description, of course. That's usually the go-to one for me. And then I kind of fill in the, the blanks that they left on my own. So uh, did you know anything about Baskin before we watched it tonight? No, I mean, you said we were going to watch it, and I was going to, like, at least read the plot to it, but I figured, I didn't have time to, really, so I just figured, uh, I'll just go in, see what it's about, but, yeah, I didn't look into it at all or anything. Yeah, so, so me, I've actually heard of Baskin, it, it actually had a little bit of hype when it was going through the festival circuit, and I remember hearing people kind of praise it and stuff, but I didn't know anything about it, um, I didn't know... The storyline, I didn't know what the film was about at all. I didn't know... I don't even know what the title like meant. You were like, we're going to watch Baskin. And I'm like, I can't even... I, don't, I have no idea what that would be about. Yeah, and then actually I was uh, talking to you earlier today. <laughs> and I was teasing you about something. And then you were like, I thought we was watching... I was like basket or something. Yeah, basket. <laughs> so it was uh, we we and then I, I wouldn't tell her the real name of it, so she kept guessing all these words that weren't <laughs> basket. Just one word, <laughs> title. Yeah, um, but so it, it did have quite a bit of buzz. But you guys know me by now, and if you don't, um, I'll explain to you a little bit. I do not watch trailers. I rarely read descriptions. I like to go in as blank as possible. Uh, I don't really watch or read reviews. I might just, you know, scroll all the way to the bottom of a review and see the rating just so I can kind of get a grasp of what people are saying about it, but what they're actually not saying. You know what I mean? Like just just a basic example of like, did they like it or not? Where, how much did they like it? And, you know, I'll keep a mental note of, you know, if I see Baskin with 10 tens or something I, i'll make note of that i don't need to know what the movie's about but i just do try to steer towards the better films especially when i do the top 10 of the year list you know i have to see all these things and i'd rather watch the good ones instead of the bad ones um but for the most part i don't pay attention to anything that actually explains what the film is and i, I recommend that a lot of people do that uh, that are listening too because it's it's a fun way to go into a movie to not know what to expect so, Baskin. Um, it starts off 
kind of basic. You know, it, it has um, a like pre-title sequence almost where there's yeah. a, a character who is a little boy and he hears his mom or what we presume is his mom like moaning uh, <laughs> like to some sex stuff <laughs> <laughs> and um he basically gets spooked he sees something he tries to wake his mom up and you know there's like a hand or something so it's like it kind of cuts to the main title sequence and then we're introduced to um policia a bunch of police mm-hmm. and it's it kind of reminds me of like Goodfellas in a way. Like these guys are all just sitting around playing cards at a table, and like the scene, like almost seems like it was completely inspired by that movie, which was kind of cool because it was kind of like out of nowhere. Like I wouldn't expect that to be in a horror film. Yeah, it was funny because the cops are sitting around there telling a story, and there's this kid who walks up and starts laughing at the story and this cop's like what the fuck's funny yeah and i'm like that's like we both looked at each other and we're like that's that's good fellas. that's good fellas <laughs> yeah like what the hell like yeah, i totally did not expect to see a scene like that at all but that scene was pretty funny and and instantly made me sort of like interested in what was going on in the movie just to see what what the hell they were gonna do um and you know from there it, it kind of uh just just goes along a little bit uh, we follow these cops, um, and they eventually uh, go out. I don't, I don't. Do you know where they were going? Like, did they just? They... I don't know. They were just like that's. It was confusing. It was just like all the all of the police apparently in that entire country were just like in this tiny van. <laughs> they were just singing along to a song and drive. It looked like they were having a good time. I don't think they were solving any crimes or anything. But. Yeah, it, it, we we actually made that joke during during the film that like like these guys aren't like squatted out in different like patrol units or anything. Like the entire police force is like in one van. They just, <laughs> just they're just like we, we the police. Like, <laughs> the police in Turkey is just one van full of guys. <laughs> that that's the entire police apparently. Um, but so so they end up getting ran off the road for some reason or another. Um, and what I actually found to be, you know, both well, incidents <laughs> involving the, the car, trying not to spoil much, but yeah. but the first one, you know, we both kind of was like, oh, like a little jump there. And the second one, like, she just started screaming. It was crazy. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. You, like, hugged me and cried a little bit. <laughs> yeah, so right. So I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, but, it, yeah, it was, it, it was, um... There was a, there was a there was a scare and to me it, it actually was pretty effective. I was like, okay, props movie. You kind of freaked me out a bit. Yeah, like honestly, the whole beginning like section of the movie was real creepy. Like I liked that about it because sometimes movies these days don't really scare me, but that was actually creeping me out. Yeah, it, I was genuinely surprised that that uh, I was able to get a little shock when I'm in a room with another person normally that only happens to me if i'm by myself and it rarely happens to me and it almost never happens to me when i'm with other people you know uh, you just feel it's not scary to be with somebody than alone so i I was surprised it was able to give me a little jump i I, it possibly was because i was talking shit right like right before (laughs) right before it happened i was like talking shit about something on on the movie or something (laughs) and then it's just like yeah i was like oh shit (laughs) so um after that, they they kind of they kind of venture into this little community type thing. It was kind of weird. It seemed like a bunch of homeless people, and then then eventually they they happen upon this building, which was apparently a police station that is abandoned. And once once they go in there, that's when like I guess shit hits the fan. But I'll kind of leave it off there a little bit. Um, the vibe that I was, I don't know about you, but the vibe that I was getting while watching this was, was Hellraiser. I was going to say that too, actually during the movie, but I thought I would sound dumb. So, but like, (laughs) yeah, I felt the same way, especially like towards the ending. Like it was just, just like spiraled into like a whole different movie almost, a whole different like atmosphere. Yeah, it, it was kind of bizarre because, um, what we're seeing is just a bunch of things that have no direct explanation you know we're just seeing like oh like there's this and oh there's that and there's chains over here and there's some things hanging over here and look that guy's in the corner like it it, it was kind of just like 
a bunch of different movies like rolled into one. Like <laughs> I kind of like, got some Blair Witch vibes. And yeah, like it was there. like three movie. It reminded me of three different movies, but in a way, it was kind of original, like in its own way too. Like I don't know. Yeah, um, to me personally, I I feel like this film starts off great. Um, it has a lot of cool things happening in it. Right there, there's like there's a lot of cool visuals. Like it, it's shot pretty well and stuff. Yeah. But I feel like the main problem to this film is that it should have picked a specific route and and kind of stuck with it. I think that what you have here with this almost like cult like or like these like devil worshiping people, these like crazies that are all like, you know gross looking and and got all kind of masks and shit on like yeah like that's just roll with that stuff right like like these police should have just went there and like that been happened earlier you know they, they spent so much time getting there and then once they're there it didn't feel as powerful like what was happening like there wasn't really much character development either like i guess yeah. there was kind of a protagonist but he didn't really seem like like, I, like I he, the, you couldn't really root for anybody in this movie or or really connect with anybody. Because it was kind of confusing too at some points. So like you didn't really know what was real and what wasn't. Like I feel like at the beginning it started out, I kind of was caring about the characters and I was interested in them. But like you said, it's like the first half was real good and then they kind of just it all held like breaks loose towards the end and it's just like yeah. Yeah, but like even even the like when hell does break loose, it felt just it just it just didn't feel like as powerful as you would expect. You know yeah. what I mean? Like there was one scene where one of the characters is is kind of getting tortured, and that that that was like kind of the highlight of the movie almost in terms of like what they were trying to do. It seemed yeah. like I think like what I was picturing and what I was expecting when it started going down that route was for it to be this like crazy almost like think of a film like hostile right like that third act where where he's captured and he's tied up in the thing Mm -hmm. that long you know dramatic like journey that he takes through like surviving and escaping and like i expected it to be more like that where it's like just brutal as hell because that seemed where it was like going yeah and then it was was gonna be like it was going to be a build up of like all these things that are happening but but it was kind of just like one scene and then like another scene and then it was like i don't know it just felt like anticlimactic to me in a way yeah like one big thing happened then like all of a sudden it's like over like all the bad yeah the film was definitely stylish though I, i'll give it props for that um the set design is really good like the the prison or not the prison but the police station Mm. is you know very very well set up like i was telling you that scene where they were uh looking down the stairwell yeah and it was like just a spiral stairwell of like just old looking just decrepit like stone you know concrete just i like like the colors at the beginning too whenever it's like the very first shot like it's like really bright red then all of a sudden it's like blue and yellows and it's i love when there's just like color yeah and and the end of the film actually has a bright a lot of bright red going on too which which i do like myself I, I'm, I'm a sucker for like these these bright like almost like neon red colors and stuff um it, it's definitely a movie that is a little ambiguous in its actual story um, it, it seems to definitely have to do with hell. Yeah. Um, whether it's like the hell that we know, like Christian or Catholic hell, or the hell of like the Hellraiser movies where it's like, okay, this is hell, but it's not like any hell that we know. It's not the hell that we we are familiar with. Um, I think it's almost more along the lines of like the Hellraiser. It, it, this film felt very inspired by Hellraiser to me. Um, but it does not hold a candle to Hellraiser, in my opinion. I yeah, know you're not, like, like, the biggest fan of Hellraiser. No, I like the first one, but those other ones kind of ruined it for me. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, it was trying to be, like, Hellraiser, but, like, it was trying to take its own approach to Hellraiser, and it just wasn't living up to it, I'd say. 
Yeah, Cause it's... Because it, Hellraiser has already been done. Like, and that's original in itself. You can't really... There's not much more you can do unless you think of something amazing. Yeah, you can't really create that, that world with, it, with, you know, again. Like, Clive Barker is, yeah, is a madman. I mean. um, but this film... Uh, it, it kind of... I don't think it ever really goes to, like, the rip-off territory of Hellraiser. It just mm. sort of... It sort of dances around and, you know, inspired by, um, like, oh, I I'm going to make a movie kind of like this, like, kind of like Hellraiser. Um, I, I think that, at the end of the day, th this film is entertaining, at yeah. least. It, it definitely is entertaining, um, there's some, there's some genuinely funny moments. There's, there's a scene where they're talking about like a, a, a tranny. Um, and I thought it was pretty funny. Did yeah. It, remind, it probably reminded you of your own life. I mean, your <laughs> life experiences. Yep. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, I, I, probably because I called it, I was like, I called the fact yeah, that you the knew story was, was going to be you a knew tranny. What was up. Yeah. I walked down that road a couple times myself. <laughs> but uh yeah so there were some funny moments and stuff like that uh they they had a lot of frogs which you know that's they had frogs they did yes a lot of frogs all the frogs all the frogs uh but you know not it i just felt like it was lacking some weight it just it was a movie that was entertaining it had its moments but to me personally, it was it was lacking something, and I can't quite put my finger on it. I think that it does have to do with a combination of character development and sort of payoff. Um, sort of the the way that the narrative is told, I think, is just uh, a little choppy. It could have been smoothed over a bit. Um, what, how did you feel about the actual storytelling? I mean, like at the beginning, I thought it was really good. And I kind of thought it was going in a different type of direction. But then when it gets to like the Hellraiser type territory, I kind of drifted off a little bit. I was just lost interest because I didn't care about the characters that much. And like you said, like it kind of builds up to nothing. So I'd say like the beginning is really good. And I just feel like they didn't know where to take it. Yeah, I, I think that like you expect that it, it, it'll go like maybe a little more traditional in yeah. terms of like a horror yeah, film. Yeah, like I had my own plot planned out in my head about it and it, I almost disappointed myself, I guess, cuz I was thinking it was going to do something different. No, I'm kind of with you on that because I felt like what the way that I was expecting it go to go might have been a like that's kind of the movie I ended up wanting to see after Yeah, like it was we should have wrote it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um I think that this film definitely gets praised because it, it's it, you know it's a little art housey and some people dig that. Hell, I love I love the the art house type films, um, and it's just something a little different, a little refreshing. Like we don't really get films like this too often that it, that are like kind of this Hellraiser style, which I, I am using the crutch of saying that it's Hellraiser a lot. It's not like a lot like Hellraiser, you know what I mean? It just seemed like it was maybe inspired or there's certain themes that, that are played that that have to be inspired by Hellraiser. But it, it's not fucking Hellraiser. Like, yeah. no, like, not in saying that it's not as good as Hellraiser, but it's also just, it's not a carbon copy of Hellraiser either. It, it is its own film. I just am using the Hellraiser comparison as a crutch because I think it's sort of the best way to describe this movie that it, that it is kind of playing on some of those themes. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, do you have uh, any, you know, glaring positives or glaring negatives that, that you can think of? I mean, like I said, it was, it started out great. It went downhill in my head. And, yeah, I don't know, really. Like It's kind it, of a hard film to talk about a little bit without getting in the spoilers. Yeah, I don't want to, like, spoil anything, but... And and it's also just one of those movies that it doesn't have a ton of substance to its narrative. Mm -hmm. um, it it just doesn't have a lot of things that you can talk about in terms of a narrative. Yeah. Um, you can talk a little bit about the music. Like the music was good. I, I did notice towards the end of the film there there was like a great 
music moment where it was kind of almost in like a, a slow motion sort of thing, which I thought was cool. Um, there is a lot of jumping around in this film where you're not really sure if it's like the middle of the movie or like the end of the movie or like it's like something that isn't even part of the story. Which I'm not a huge fan of all the time if I can't follow it or if I get lost somewhere in the middle of it because I feel like I have no idea what happened during the movie if I get real confused. Were you uh, very confused in this one or just a little? Not very. It was it was slightly. It wasn't terrible. I'm just saying. Like, I feel like that's a risky route to take all the time with movies when you jump around like that. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, but if you don't have anything else on Baskin, mm-hmm. um, we can kind of go into our final thoughts and ratings. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I'll go first. I'll take the wheel here. Um, just to sort of... Um, wrap up my final thoughts on Baskin. Uh, I did like it. I thought it was definitely a fun movie. Uh, it, it has its high points and it has its low points. Uh, its low points for me were just um, lack of character development and um, the the narrative was just a bit off to me and it just didn't have the weight that I was looking for. Uh, positives is that you know it can kind of get pretty gory. We didn't really talk about that, but it, it's yeah. it, uh, it had some good gore shots in it. Well shot, and it's just something different, and I like that. Uh, so uh, I, I'm gonna come in at about a seven out of ten on this one. How about you? Um, yeah, I thought it was an average film at best. Like I'd say, definitely check it out if you're just bored one day and looking for something on Netflix because it does grab your attention throughout. Of course, it do, like for me, it does kind of drop off at the end. But yeah, I'd just say it's average, really. There's not really much to talk about. So I'm just going to give it like a 6.5 out of 10, I'd say. So 6.5. Yeah. Um, most people consider average to be 5 out of 10. So you kind of said it was average and gave it above average. Rating. See, in my head, I always think of 7s as being average for some reason, which is stupid because that's like only three below 10 but i mean i don't know it's above average okay it's above average. <laughs> a little bit if you use like, inf- i'm not gonna be harsh about it because i did like it i was entertained all right so um with that said guys i hope you enjoyed um the pilot episode of netflix and chill horror podcast uh it was fun to watch baskin and record a review in a place where i'm not used to recording a review. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, final thoughts, final sayings. What do you? Anything? You got anything? Um. Just, well, I'm Carly, and thank you for listening to me on my first podcast. Hope you didn't hate me. <laughs> uh yeah. So, uh, if you guys would please, you know, give us feedback on this because um, that kind of will determine if we continue on or not. And uh, if we do, uh, I don't have anything to plug right now. We obviously didn't create a Facebook page yet or a, a Twitter or anything like that. But, you know, depending on the success of the show, uh, we could do that later. But as always, you can join the 22 Shots of Moods and Horror group page on Facebook, which is where all the horror happenings are. And uh, you can talk to me that way as well, which is facebook.com slash group slash 22 Shots podcast. Uh, I'm JP. I'm Carly. See you next time. Baby, I'm for real. I won't pull out if you want to peel. Got a DM from a teenage beauty. Wants me to come to a spot and watch goonies. So I slip me a roofie. Then slid my dick in a slippery booty. Rolled up some reefer on the lower back while I beat that beaver. In the bedroom theater. Pulled it out of her ass, wiped off on my t shirt. She want red wine and dinner, bitch. You getting red wine? And Twizzlers, soft porn, cock in the popcorn, show some respect. Robocop song, blew me till the teeth hurt. Bust two nuts, that's a double feature. Who would have thunk it? Netflix, the new code word for fucking. Baby, what's the deal? You wanna watch Netflix and chill? Baby, I'm for real. I won't pull out if you want to peel. Baby, what's the deal? You wanna watch Netflix and chill? Three, two, one.
never thought how I was gonna actually enter this. Oh, you're fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I keep asking. What are we? What's the intro gonna be? Like.